Today is a special day, as you all know, uh, that today is the ninth of the Muharram. Uh, the Quran reminds us about the days and the weeks and the months. Throughout the Quran, you would see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, Wal Fajr, Wal Layal, and Ashr. Allah reminds us about the times and about the days, number of days, these 10 days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when He created, he, the heavens and the earth, He created the 12 months. The 12 months were there from the beginning. Allah has divided time into 12 months. And one of the things that Abdullah Ansari says that's so beautiful, he said the months could not take the weight of time because time is weighty. This, if, it was, if it wasn't weighty, Allah wouldn't swear by it. Allah says, Wal Asr. I swear by the Asr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by Fajr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by these specific times of the day. And it was so weighty that the month could not handle the time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this beautiful, we call the kalima, La ilaha illallah. And La ilaha illallah has 12 letters. Each of the letters became a sutun, became a pillar to hold each month. So this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that until the last person that says La ilaha illallah, the end of time will not come. It's still world as it is, it will turn, it will go forward. When the last person stops saying La ilaha illallah, then it is the end of time, which means that those 12 letters would not be repeated by anyone and they will be removed from the pillars. These are the 12 pillars that holding to the month and time will collapse. And that's the end of time. There's the power of Kalimatu La ilaha illallah. So time is sacred. And then we have these four sacred months. From the 12 months, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there are the four sacred months. And these are, this is one of the four months. This is Muharram. This is the beautiful month of Muharram called the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this month, we have these, uh, these days, the 10 days. Walayal and Ashar, these 10 days. We have the 10 nights of Ramadan. We have, we have the 10 days of Hajj. These are the blessed days. And this is why the Quran reminds us about these great days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and remember the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah reminds us to remember these days, these momentous days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what is so unique about Ashura, about these 10 days? What is so unique about it? What's unique about Ashura is that it's uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, when he went to Medina, there's a beautiful hadith by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. May Allah have mercy, be pleased with him and be pleased with, uh, with his father Abbas. He says, Qadima Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Medina. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, he, when he went to Medina Munawwara, fara uh, al-Yahud, Yahuda tasawmu yawm ashura. So he saw the Jews, uh, uh, on the day of Ashura, he saw the Jews on the day of Ashura fasting, and and he said, uh, so he was wondering why are they they're fasting on, on Ashura? Fakala Mahada, what is this? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked, what is this? Alu hada yom salih. This is a righteous day. They said the Jews said this is a righteous day. It's a good day. هَذَا يَوْمُ نَجِيَ اللَّهُ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ مِنْ عَدُوهُ مِنْ عَدُوهُهُمْ That this is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Bani Israel. Bani Israel are the children of Israel. One of the name of Ya'qub alayhi salam, the father of Yusuf, was Israel. And that's why they call Bani Israel, they're all the children of Ya'qub alayhi salam. So, the, the, in, in, in Musa alayhi salam being from that lineage, so he said, this is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa and his people from Fir'aun, their enemies. This is one of the, uh, one of the, uh, the, 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 the great days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Musa alayhi salam is saved from that. Fasamahu Musa. So Musa alayhi salam fasted. Why did he fast? Out of shukr and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for taking him out of this calamity, of this trials and tribulation that he was going through persecuted by Fir'aun. Fir'aun is the archetype that Allah uses in the Quran. If you want to know oppression, look at Fir'aun. This is dhulum. This is oppression. This is the pinnacle of a zalim, of someone who's an oppressor. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they come towards the Niles, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
tells Musa alayhi salam, we all heard the story, then the sea parted. And this is one of the questions when we were little children, they would ask us, what is the only part of the earth that, that has seen the sun only one time? And we would get stuck and they said, it is this part of the earth when the sea parted and the sun hit the, the, the bottom of the Nile. And, and, and then Musa alayhi salam, and they all crossed over to the other side and they were saved in Fir'aun and his people were drowned in this, in this, uh, uh, in the Niles. So this is the great day. So for some who Musa, Musa alayhi salam fasted, Qala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, this is one of the most beautiful statements. فَأَنَا أَحَقُّ بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ I have more right to Musa than you. This is the great honor that the Prophet sallallahu gave to Musa alayhi salam and the practice of Musa alayhi salam which was fasting on this day of Ashura. I have more, what, is, what does he mean I have more right to Musa alayhi salam? What is, it, what is the Prophet saying? Musa alayhi salam was the brother of the Prophet وسلم, in the lineage of prophethood. The prophets, they have a, uh, a relationship than the others we don't have. They are brothers. If you remember the story of Adas, Adas, who was from Nineveh, from the land of Yusuf ibn Matta, he, the Prophet وسلم, met him in Taif. And when he met him in Taif after that, that, that horrible day of what happened to the Prophet ﷺ, they drove him out of the city. He went to the garden and he met Adas, the servant. He was a Christian servant who was from Nineveh. And when he asked the Prophet ﷺ, you know, what is this Bismillah you're saying? Because these people don't say Bismillah. The Prophet asked him, where are you from? He said, I am from Nineveh. He said, you are from the land of Yusuf ibn Metta, my brother. And he said, how is he your brother? He said, he was a prophet, and I'm a prophet. And prophets, they have a relationship. And Musa salam, and the Prophet salam, have a relationship, that this, this prophetic relationship, that they're both prophets. So then he said, the Prophet salam, said, I have more right to Musa. Fasamahu, this is very important. Wa amara bi He fasted himself, and then he commanded his companion to fast. This is amazing. The Prophet will never pe tell people to do something unless he practiced it himself first. The Prophet always practiced that which he preached. So, this is the day became the, uh, the Prophet commanded them. So they all fasted. It actually was a, was a mandatory fast until Ramadan, which uh, two years and eight months later, Ramadan uh, was, was prescribed, fasting was prescribed. We know the Quran says uh, uh, that fasting was prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who came before you. Ramadan became fard, and then this, the day of Ashura became, uh, it, it moved from obligatory to become a, a, a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so it became optional. It's a beautiful day to fast on the day of Ashura, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on the last year of his life, he said that if I, if I live the next year, I will fast on the ninth day and on the tenth day. This is to give an identity to the Muslim fast versus the other people. But you have to also remember that the people of Mecca, they used to fast on the day of Ashura, even before uh, Revelation. Uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu fasted. And the, one of the reasons they're saying that the, the, the Mufassirin that is that they fasted because of... Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, it was a tradition that Ibrahim alayhi salam fasted. Because this day of Ashura has been an amazing day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا أَنْ أَخْرَجْ قَوْمْ قَوْمَكَ مِنَ الظُّلْمَاتِ إِنَ النُّورِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, you know, sent Musa alayhi salam to, to take his people from dhulamat, from darknesses into light. Abdullah Ansari says, there are many darknesses that were taken out. One is the darkness, the, 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 the worst darkness. The worst darkness is the darkness of doubt. And this is the great game of Satan, to put doubt in the heart of the believers. So Abdullah Ansari said, it is to move, is to take them from the dark darkness of doubt into the light of certainty. Subhanallah. And then he said to take him from the darkness of ignorance into the light of knowledge. These are the great 
the, 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 the light of knowledge and light of certainty are, are two of the greatest. This is why Abdul Ansari in, in Maybudi commentary mentioned these two. And then it says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ Remind him of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the great days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the day that Musa alayhi salam was being chased by Pharaoh and his army. Nobody had an army like Pharaoh. Nobody had power like Pharaoh. In the history of humanity, he stands as one of the most unique characters, one of the most unique tyrant, zalim. And yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drowned him in the sea. These are the great days of Allah, so we don't lose hope. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't lose hope. With the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ansari says that God has always been there. God has always been there with his servant. Have we been with God? Where have we been? God would never abandon his servant. He said something really beautiful. He said, Anruz Kujabaz Yabam Kitu Marabudi Waman Nabuda. That day. I, I want to go back to that day where I didn't even exist. I didn't even exist. And yet you were there for me. Allah was there before we even existed. Allah was there for us before we even existed, before we came into this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was there and He is there and He will always be there. But are we there with God? This is the great question that we need to ask. And this is why we have to remind ourselves about the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these great days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the days Allah subhanahu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in Sahih al-Muslim. The fast of the day of Ashura. After the month of Ramadan is the greatest day is the fast on the day of Ashura, which is tomorrow, the 10th of Muharram. After Ramadan, and the Prophet wasallam priority of his fasting was Ramadan, then the day of Ashura. The Prophet wasallam said also that whoever shows, this is a beautiful hadith, practice it, it's a beautiful hadith. He said, whoever, one who shows, one who generous, uh, shows generosity and spends on his family on the day of Ashura. Someone who is generous and spends on his family on this day of Ashura, which is tomorrow. Allah will be generous with him for the entire year. If you want to see generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on you, manifested on you, show generosity today to your family. Those who are fuqara, poor families, send them money, help them out. This is a great day to do that. Wallahi, it's a great day. Now listen to this. This, is, this hadith is in Al-Bayhaqi. Sure. Uh, Imam Bayhaq in Arabic says, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal said, May Allah be pleased with him. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal said, He quote Sufyan ibn Uyayna. I have practiced this, spending money on my family. He said, I practiced this hadith. These ulama, they were not about transmitting hadith. They were about practicing it first before they transmitted the hadith. I have practiced this for 50 or 60 years. In other words, all my life I practice this. Ever since I learned this hadith, I practice on the day of Ashura, I spend on my family. And I found nothing but good in it. I found nothing but good in it. In other words, the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the promises of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're real, they're true. These promises are not fake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is real. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are the days, the days of, that remind them of the great days of Allah. This is the day that Musa was saved on the day of Ashura. This is also the day that Nuh's ark. Now Nuh alayhi salam, look at the suffering that he went through. 950 years he preached to his family, to his friends, to his community, and they rejected him. 950 years. Look at that trial. And they rejected him. And he, Allah told him to build the ark. And he, he got on the ark. His own son, his own son was not saved because he hanged the wrong people. He hanged with the wrong company. This is very important for people to know that, you know, two things. What is one of the great wise men of the Persian wise men who, who was, uh, who was a, 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 a person who used to give counsel to the kings of Persia. 
to Anushirwan Adil, one of the great kings of Persia, the just kings of Persia. He was his, his wise man, his, his right hand man who would ask for, for wisdom from him. And he asked him, he said, he said, what has the, the greatest effect on a human being? He said, the womb of the mother and the companionship of people. The womb of your mother and the companionship of people. And this is why when you, when you, when you want to pick someone as your spouse, to, to marry someone as your wife, you want to pick someone that they, they are righteous people, they're people of piety and beauty and ihsan, that they would, they, because that effect will, will go, whatever it, they are, it will affect the children. And then you see the companionship. The son of Nu hanged around with the wrong people. And he lost his, the lineage of his father. The Persian poet said, Pasari Nu ba badan binishast, khanadan nabuwatash gum shud. Sag athab kaf ruzi chan, pay khuban giriftu adam shud. The son of Nu alayhi salam started hanging around with the wrong crowd. And he lost the lineage of his prophethood. Because Allah said, that's not your son. You're, the one who follows you is your son, who follows your religion and your teaching, right? And he, and he became amongst the people that would, was not saved. He was drowned in the, in the, in the, uh, in the flood of Nuh alayhi salam. But the poet said, look at the dog of the companion of the caves. Because the companion of the caves, they were running from the Qanus and they were running from this oppressive uh, king and they were righteous people. The righteous people. And this dog keep following them. They said, they try to take him away, but the dog keep following him. He said, the dog of the companions of the cave kept the companionship of beautiful people and became a human. In other words, we don't say the companions of the cave and the dog. We say the companions of the cave, Ashab al-Kahf, which includes a dog. Look at the maqam of that dog that's in paradise with the companion of the cave. This is the day that Nuh alayhi salam, the Ark of Nuh, found a rest on Mount Judy. Yunus alayhi salam, this is the day that he came out and was saved from the belly of the well on the day of Ashura. The tomb of Adam alayhi salam was accepted after he was thrown from, the, from paradise into, into uh, the earth. This is the day that Allah accepted his tawbah. Yusuf alayhi salam was saved from the well on the day of Ashura. That he was found and he was taken out and then he became the, the king of, of Egypt, Aziz of Misr. Yaqub salam got his eyesight back on the day of Ashura. This is an amazing day. These are the great days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we also have tragic days, tragic things that happen on this day. And we know the story of Karbala, of Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein went with his family, with, with an army of 72 people. What kind of army is that? He didn't go for fight. He didn't go for war. He went for peace. He went for peace. He went with his wife and his children and his family, the men and women and children. He went to Karbala. And he was slaughtered. He was martyred. Even Ziyad made a mistake. He was a young man, 26, 28 years old. He made a mistake. And, and the truth is on the side of Imam Hussein. He wasn't wrong, but it was it, it was gruesome act. It was a horrible day, but wallahi, even with the death of Hussein, his death was beautiful. He took a ghusl, he put on new clothes, he put on perfume, and that's how he went to his Lord. Ma ra'ayta illa jami. Wallahi, we don't see in Karbala. They said we didn't see anything except beauty, except beauty, because he manifested beauty. He wasn't a man of ugliness. And this is why we remember him, Hussein radiallahu anhu. He, look at that relationship. You want to know who Hassan and Hussein are? Hassan and Hussein are the only two brothers that every Muslim, that every Muslim mentions them every Juma on the khutbah. Hassan and Hussein, Shabab and Jam. Every Jew, that they're the two youth of paradise. These are the superstars of paradise. Let's see who's their mother. Fatima, Sayyidat Nisa Ahlul Jannah. Fatima is the princess of the people of paradise. Who's Ali? Karam Allah Waju wa Allah May Allah be pleased with him and ennoble his face. Who is he? 
He is amongst Asharatul Mubashara, those who were promised paradise. Who, who is their grandfather? The Prophet wasallam, the first man that enters paradise, that all of the heavens and the earth envies him in a beautiful way. They haven't seen him. They're like, oh, we wish we would have seen him. Even the, 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 the scorpions and the snakes, they wanted to see his face. The birds, they wanted to see his face. The fish, they wanted to see his face. Every human, everyone who set eyes on him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he looked at him, they became sahaba. They became the elite group of people. This is who sallallahu, he is sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is Hassan and Hussein. This is the family of Hassan and Hussein. Hussein radiallahu alayhi was not interested in all of these things. Was not, he, he was a servant of God. This is why the Urdu poet he said, I, I don't I'm not a I'm not a, a, a leader or a king. I don't I don't want any of these things. I don't want I don't want kingdom, I don't want I don't want any of these things. My kingdom is your love. Your love, your ish is my kingdom. And I'm a servant of that kingdom. I'm a slave of love. That's what he was. He was a servant of love, of al-wadud, of a loving God. This is, the, this is, the, this is Hussein radiallahu anhu. But it was a tragedy that happened. And, 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 and this is history. And in history, we have a lot of, a lot of things that happen. But we don't hold, we, we move on and we rectify things. We rectify things, inshallah ta'ala. And, and we move on with our brothers and our sisters who believe in, you know, some people, they, they have they, they have husband and they have, you know, we, we there are brothers and there are sisters. We are all one family. The, the brotherhood and the sisterhood is in belief that all of the believers, they're brothers and sisters of each other. That this is the time these are the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that to reflect on all of the trials and tribulations that the prophets that all of these people went through and how Allah saved them. And I was with a great Shaykh many years ago. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Shahab, Rahimullah, may Allah have mercy on his soul, he died a few years ago. And he, he was one of the most amazing human beings that I've ever met uh, in my lifetime. Uh, and, a, and a real righteous man and a real scholar. I mean, when scholars, like the, he, was, he was a alim. And he said something really beautiful. He said that you, you have to really remember that the the uh, the promises of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is 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 true, that it's real, you know. Wa'ad Allah, no the wa'ad Allah, no. Look at the 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 uh, the promises of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. La yuqlifu Allah wa'adahu. Allah subhanahu wa taala will not will not be uh, going against His promises. Will not be he he will not abandon you when he promises you something when Allah promises something he fulfills his promise that's the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said something to us uh, we were there he said well times are going to get tough times are going to get tough you're going to go through trials and tribulation read this dua la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal zalimin read this dua la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal zalimin this is the dua of yunus in the belly of the whale yunus alayhi salam the the uh the darkness of disobedience the darkness of the of of the ocean the darkness of the belly of the world. All of the darknesses of the world is in this dua. Allah removed and took him out of all of the darknesses with this dua. We are going through a lot of suffering. People are going through trials and tribulation. Look at Musa alayhi salam. Look at Nuh alayhi salam. Look at all of the prophets what they went through. These are the days of, these are the great days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we make dua, that we change our lives and dua can change your life. This is the power of dua. Dua's will change your life. This is, this is the nature of dua. This is a great dua to do to remove all of the trials and tribulation and the darknesses from our lives. People are struggling. People are suffering. People have, 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 have problems in their household, with their children, with their families. 
the, this is the time of trials and tribulation everybody is going through. The people are going through things that is, is unheard of in the history of humanity. It's time to cling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no better time to do it today on the ninth day of day of Muharram. No better day to do it tomorrow on the day of Ashura. These are the days. Take advantage of these days, of these times, and go back to your Lord and ask Him, Wallahi, the promises of Allah is true and real. He does not abandon His servant. He was there when we were not even an idea in the mind of our parents. He was there when the earth wasn't even created. And He is there now. In rahmati was he at kulli shay. In his mercy encompasses everything. And he has put his mercy over his qadab just for us. Just for us. So he shows us mercy over his wrath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. But where are we at? These are the time. Let's turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that inshallah Allah will remove all the trials and tribulation from the ummah of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And from the world. Ya Allah we ask you. To protect everyone who is, who who uh, who is listened to to this to this khutbah, and protect all of the believers and everyone and their families and the friends and and the entire humanity, ya Allah, ya Rahman, Rahim, and especially from this coronavirus, ya Allah, remove this pandemic from this planet Earth and make it a, make it a, an awakening call, ya Allah, ya Allah, a call that 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 we will be awakened and realize that you are in power and you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Ya Allah, remove this pandemic. Ya Allah, give healing to all of those people that are suffering from this, especially our beloved friend, Sidi Yasin Kippa, Ya Allah, and his mother. Ya Allah, give shifa to them who, who are in, in the hospital. And, and, ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. And everyone else that, that anyone knows, family, friends, and the believers in humanity, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Shifa, Ya Allah, is in your hand, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Allah, make things easy. Allahumma yassar wa la tu'asir. Ya Allah, make the affairs of the believers easy. Ya Allah, people who are struggling with their families and their children and their parents and their relations. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, relationship with their with their spouses. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Put your mercy, your love, and your gentleness in their hearts. Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Allah, make things easy. Ya Allah, in their hearts. Allahumma yassar wa la tu'asir. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam. Wa rahmat ya Rahman Rahimeen. جزاك الله خيرا تقبل الله وصلى الله تعالى سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين امين